Hey everyone, I'm Antrish, and today I'll be walking you through my summer research project, which is all about optimizing uniform at random sampling for grammar inference. We're going to start off with a bit of background on the field of grammar inference and what our project was all about. We'll then walk through the actual work that we did over the summer, and finally, we'll conclude with our major findings. So let's get started. What is grammar inference? Very simply put, it's the act of learning bits and pieces about a new language through repeated observation. It's similar to how after spending some time in a foreign country, you start to infer the meaning of certain signs based on where you keep on seeing them. Like for example, how you pick up the word for exit after seeing it on the highway. More formally, grammar inference is the process of automatically learning the underlying rules and structure of a formal grammar from a set of observed strings. What's a formal grammar? Well, a formal grammar here is just a tool that we use in linguistics to help define a language. Or more specifically, what strings are in a language and what strings aren't. So on the slide here is a really small example of a grammar. There are only 18 valid strings in this language. A horse stands, a horse walks, a dog stands, etc. All other strings are invalid. So a horse sits isn't a valid string. So you might think grammar inference is a really niche field, but it's actually used all around us. For example, how does ChatGPT recognize that a user is unhappy with its response? Grammar inference is used in this field, which is called sentiment analysis, to help understand the patterns associated with positive and negative reviews. Positive reviews might contain phrases like highly recommend or words like excellent and love, while negative reviews might tend to use shorter sentences and negations such as did not like. So the uses of grammar inference are really far and wide. It's not just used in natural language processing, which we just talked about. It's also used in programming languages, specifically code analysis, code parsing, and code verification. Our focus for this project, though, is less on the uses of grammar inference and more on the actual algorithms that are used to conduct grammar inference. Specifically, our project focuses on how how can we conclude that one grammar inference algorithm is better than another? How do we quantify the effectiveness of learning a new language? Well, this is no different to learning a new human language. If I was learning Spanish, I'd say I was good at Spanish if the words that I could speak match the words in the Spanish language well. In the same way, a grammar inference algorithm is good if the inferred grammar is similar to the original grammar. Now we've got to define similarity. Well, we can do this through two measures, precision and recall. The idea behind precision is if you take the inferred grammar and generate strings from it, how many of those strings will be valid according to the original grammar? Recall is just the inverse. If you generate strings from the original grammar and then try and pass those strings using the inferred grammar, how many will be accepted? Note that the main thing that lies at the bottom of both precision and recall is the generation of strings must be uniform at random. And what this means is that the probability of picking any string from the grammar must be equal. The probability must be uniform. After we obtain values for precision and recall, we can then combine them using the F1 score. And so if we wanted to compare the effectiveness of grammar inference algorithms, we can just compare the grammar inference algorithms F1 scores. So this is exactly our project goal. We want to set up that entire tool chain to be able to compare two algorithms. As I've just said, though, this is quite a long project. Due to the short time we had over the summer, we've actually split the project up into multiple stages. And for this internship, we've decided to focus on phase one, which was just to build the foundational structures and functions for working with the grammars. And to prove that those foundational structures work, we wanted to also program the uniform at random sampling. So what's the problem here? Well, no one likes slow algorithms. And when you're working with grammars which contain thousands of rules and tens of thousands of strings, efficiency becomes even more critical. The main issue we face here is that most current algorithms for uniform at random sampling are written in Python, which is a slower interpreted language. But we needed something faster and more low level especially if we were to build the foundation for an entire library of functionality. So these were the goals for phase one. Now let's talk about what we actually did in the project. First off, C was our programming language of choice here. 
C gives you precise control over the hardware of your computer. And this is important because we're here to make our foundation as efficient as possible. And to do that, to make our foundation efficient, we need the ability to choose whether we want something statically allocated or dynamically allocated. And a high level language like Python just doesn't allow us to do that. So we chose our language. Now we need to think about how we wanted to represent grammars in that language. We could have just stuck with working with strings, but strings are variable length. And they also bring with them really slow string operations like string compare. So instead of that, we mapped each token in the grammar to an 8-bit number. And what this allowed us to do was firstly save a whole lot of space and a whole lot of expensive memory allocations. It also allowed us some really neat optimizations. For example, we can check if a token is non-terminal just by checking its most significant bit. Another smart optimization was to store the tokens in the same order that they appear in the grammar. This way, the index of the rule in the grammar was just the four least significant bits of the rules token. So we've defined a structure to represent a grammar. Now we want to make the structure available to developers. Most researchers use JSON to represent grammars. So here, we've created a JSON to C converter. Developers can punch in the JSON code and it'll output the C initialization code that developers can use to statically initialize their grammar into their programs. So that was sort of part one. Now let's talk about part two, which is how we sample the string uniformly at random from our grammar. We took the simplest possible approach here. First, we generated all possible strings from the grammar and we enumerated them from one to N. We can then randomly sample from this range. And this ensures the equal probability of selecting any string in the grammar. Our algorithm for this recurses through every rule in every non-terminal in the grammar. So it's at face value quite a naive implementation. To optimize this, we actually created some custom hash tables to memoize the keys and rules which had already been traversed. So how do we do? Well, using all of the above optimizations, we achieved a really significant improvement in performance. Uh, our basic fuzzer now operates at 23 times the speed of its Python counterpart. Such a monumental improvement really goes to show not only the effectiveness of our approach of optimizations, but the decision to transition to a language like C really paid off. Similarly, our UAR sampling algorithm is now running 14 times faster compared to its Python counterpart. So clearly the foundational structures we built in C were far more optimal than relying on Python's dictionaries, lists, and strings. But bigger than the project, we feel that our optimizations in our code also offer a really valuable resource for the programming and academic community at large. You know, we really prioritized clean documentation in this project because our goal wasn't just to set up these foundations for us. It really was to hopefully foster future development and future collaboration in this field. As I mentioned at the start of the talk, this was just phase one of a much larger project in the works. The next stage will be to research more complex UAR sampling algorithms and to implement those along with grammar inference algorithms as well. You can find all the work discussed in this talk at our open source GitHub repository, GFuzz Tools. And you know, we're always looking for new contributors to the project. So if, you, if you're interested, please contact me or my supervisor. Um, we'd love to have you. And speaking of my supervisor, I would like to use the opportunity to, to, to thank him for you know, all his ongoing support and his guidance throughout this internship. So thank you. Um, feel free to contact me through any of these links if you have any questions. But otherwise, thanks for watching.